Hi, hoteliers. My name is Christy Ingram, and I'll be your host for today's episode of M3 Minutes Podcast. Today, we'll be speaking with Michael Prawl, VP at Pamerang. Join us on the couch. Hi, Michael. Hi, Christy. Hi, thanks for being here today. Absolutely fun. Appreciate y'all stopping in. My pleasure. So let's dive in. Who is Pamerang and how do you help M3 customers? Well, you know, let's see. Pamerang's been a partner with M3 now for, gosh, is this year four or five? Five, year five. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, you know, we're located in Richmond, Virginia. And, uh, you know, we've been a financial technology company dealing mainly in the payables business mm-hmm. um, in a lot of different verticals. I happen to run the hospitality vertical. So, um, uh, you know, we're excited about what we've done and to talk about today and really excited about uh, what's going to happen going forward because, you know, of the the acquisition we had. So really excited about that. Awesome. And congratulations on that. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. Thanks. Because we certainly want to know more about that. Um, But before we understand where you're going, let's talk about where you've been. Can you talk a little bit about um, how the M3 and Pamerang relationship was forged, the history there? You talk a little bit about it that. Is, uh, I love talking about this. And I think I, I repeat this so much. I think people get tired of hearing it. Or, you know, it's one of the things where I've told them that story before. But great story. It started back in 2018. Uh, happened to be at the lodging conference. Uh, met a gentleman who introduced me to some people here at, at M3. And, um, and we kind of forged conversations for about a year. And it really had to do with, you know, what we do, what you do, and how do we really help the industry? Like, what's the industry currently doing? And then what can we help them with on the, on, on the, the payables on the back end? And what we found was what the industry was actually doing was what we call fragmented payments. They were not really using credit cards to pay things. If they were, it was a personal card. They were maybe doing some ACHs, but really just didn't want to enroll people because it's just a hassle to do mm-hmm. that, plus the security issue. And mainly still writing checks, right? And then dealing with fraud, dealing with all that stuff. And it was just, it was, it was so fragmented. It was... Uh, it was just chaos. I called it controlled chaos. You and I talked about that. Like, I don't, I'm not sure how it ever happened. And so to be able to take that uh, and have a vision of, okay, how do we do this? How do we really help them? Right? Because the one thing is people have software a lot of times and they just want to, they just want to push it on and say, well, this software is great. And, and the idea is first you have to identify what's the problem. The problem here is that we're, we're dealing with multiple ways of paying vendors. It's very inefficient. It's, it's, it's exposed to fraud and there's really no follow-up and, and we're doing all the work. And as we add hotels, we're just having to add staff and add people. And it's just, there's no economies of scale. There's no benefit, right? And every time a management company adds a hotel, they're like, oh gosh, how many more people do we have to hire to do all this work? So to be able to see that vision of, okay, we're going to now take that chaotic process And we're going to create one file. And that one file is going to take care of all your payments. And it's going to mitigate all the fraud issues you're dealing with. It's going to eliminate the reconciliation that you're dealing with. Uh, It's going to provide some rewards back to you on a cash basis. And it's really going to take away all that busy manual work that you're doing and give you the tools to manage it, but to be able to do other things. To see that vision come into play where we literally started with this great idea and now to see thousands of hotels mm-hmm. and, and hundreds of management companies adopt this technology. And then I know it's good because now there's a lot of other people that want to do this, right? There's other companies who are trying to mirror what we do. And to see that vision and, and then talk to people about, I have no idea how we paid our bills before we had Pamerang. And to, to get that type of feedback uh, at a conference or in a conversation or just in a, a review um, it's just, it's been so rewarding for me personally. You don't usually get that. You know, you just don't usually get that. Usually when you're in a market, you know, you get some feedback that's not there, but I think that vision of what we've been able to accomplish and hear from the, from the customers, uh, has been personally and professionally rewarding. Absolutely. And you know, I completely concur with that. Um, because I know how, important the solutions that we together provide that provided for our customers especially during the pandemic you know allowing them to just you know not have to get out you know they can still cut their checks Mm -hmm. you know i tell them you can you can cut your checks you can still you do your check runs while you're sitting there watching young and the restless you know you don't have to go out if you don't feel good and so forth and on top of that you know they were earning rebates when you know money was scarce Mm -hmm. uh during the pandemic so it has just been you know, a godsend for a lot of people. And I have felt very proud of the work that we have done together for sure, for sure, especially for an industry that I love so much. Uh, Cause you know, I grew up in the hospitality industry. So as did you, I think. Well, a little bit, a little bit on the technology side, but yeah. 
So, um, I know we have, uh, we've had different iterations. We've made enhancements. Um, talk to me about the integration uh, with M3. How does it enable mutual clients to unlock seamless uh, financial workflows? Well, what's, what's good about, you know, f when we started the program, we really used a flat file. We did a manual upload and that that was light years ahead of what they were doing, right? And that was great. And so as as automation uh, improves, right? Sure. There's a lot of things that have to improve in it as the specificity of exactly uh, each hotel, their their treasury account and what vendor they're paying. Sometimes it's the same vendor across uh, different hotels, right? So you're, you're all paying US Foods or you're all paying HD Supply. So, but maybe you're paying a different location because of the location of where the hotel is. So there, there's all those little things and maybe you're paying for multiple accounts, right? And I, we call that multi-entity management. And that's what we perfected with M3 was how to serve true multi-entity because single entity payments is pretty cursory. And that's not a difficult thing to do. But to do multi-entity in a file and to be able to get the payments where they're supposed to get to, get them settled and reconciled, that, that's, a really, that's a really big piece of it. Because if you can't do that, all you do is increase phone calls and make people's lives miserable. And so when we perfected that, I think that's what made it grow. Because one person word of mouth to the next person to the next person, like, no, 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 this is unbelievable. I think that workflow, to be able to trust that workflow, um, and be able to go and do more important things for your AP team and your accounts receivable team is the aha of everything that we do. Because people are like, wait, I don't have to, I don't, what, I don't have, you mean I can, I have time to go over here and do some training. I have time to go over here and, and check our vendor supply. I have ch time to check our terms and see if they're better. I have time to do other things rather than answer phone calls from a general manager or answer phone calls from a vendor or look at a misapplied payment or things like that. So I think the That's workflows right. Uh, streamlining has been uh, one of the biggest ahas that we've created together. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So in your conversations uh, with finance leaders in the hospitality industry, what are some of the current challenges that you're hearing from the most? Yeah. And, you know, we're getting to that next, that next level of automation. Um, what we hear that people really want are some of the products that are going to be exciting for next year that we're, we're all talking about. Um, but, you know, and you guys offer it, invoice management, I mm -hmm. think, is one of the bigger things. Being able to to get that invoice scanned in via OCR, that, that's a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, not having to hand key all that stuff. And, and of course, the, the AI has really gotten better. So the scans have gotten better. So the exceptions have gotten lower. So it really is. And then being able to store that document and being able to route that document for approval um, and maybe even match it up to a PO. That's the, probably the, one of the bigger items that I see people, now that they've implemented payments, they're looking at maybe that invoice side because that, that could be a staffing issue too. Uh, and then from there, it goes to expense management. That's another big thing. Um, even the multi-card type, type stuff that's coming up, you know, where they want to maybe have a purchase card at the, at the property and not have to do employee reimbursements and mm -hmm. have it tied back to the budget or tied back to the GL. Um, that next level of automation, I think, is where we're going. Because if you're not in the payments industry, if you haven't automated your payments today, you're already behind. Right. right? You're either getting better, getting worse. Guess what? You're getting worse because you haven't done it. Because you can't scale the way that your competitors can now. You can't do the things that your competitors uh, are doing. And you're just spending a lot of time doing manual work that's really just unnecessary. So talk to me about how Paymerang helps those businesses meet those challenges? Well, the implementation of payments is the first thing I always say. If you had a choice between between doing invoice and payments, I'd always do the payments first. Um, that That's going to really, you know, take care of the cash flow issues and get that set. And then do the invoice piece second because it's a little more intricate in doing that. So what we've been able to do is, is to enable uh, people very easily. I mean, the implementation of an automated payment system is really not that difficult. Um, if you have someone at your company that is going to you know be responsible for this, and you have all the information on your your properties. There is nothing saying you couldn't have your properties. I mean, we just did 130 hotel management company in less than four months. So that nice. that's how easy it is. And because they were engaged, right? So they were engaged. We were engaged. They knew what they wanted. They did it in waves. Everybody was up and running. It worked perfect. I think if you're able to to do that, and and so many people look at it like, well, I've, I I can't do it right now. I have something else to do. Or we've got this other project going, or we're looking at that next quarter. I get that, but all you're doing is kicking the can down the road. You're going to do this anyway, 
you're going to have to do it. Um, so, you know, they always say, eat the frog, just, you know, get it over with and do it. Just go ahead and get it implemented because it's not difficult to do. We have made the implementation so easy and so streamlined that um, we're able to assist. You know, the M3 team is outstanding. The Paymerang team is out, outstanding. It's almost a subconscious behavior for us now when we get a new client because we're so good at it. And I think that's what I would like to stress is the success you'll get is exponential by do, by stopping and doing the implementation and go ahead and get automated today so you can get on to those other projects that are going to take up a lot of your time. That's right. And just to kind of piggyback on that, uh, talk to me. I know the, the Pemmering team is so invested in hospitality. You guys developed your own team specifically for hospitality. We did. And that and it's, um, it's interesting. It's automation, but it really does still have uh, a hands-on perspective for us. So what we did, we f we formed a group called iStay, mm -hmm. and they only do hospitality. That's it. They only do the hotels. So they know hospitality vendors. They know their idiosyncrasies, their little nuances. You know, uh, if I'm going to make a card payment, I need to call Tina at 4 o'clock on Thursday because that way she's there to process a card. T down to that level. But the other thing is, you know, we have that one-to-one -one client success where every account is assigned a person. And that person's email, phone number, times they work, and they're responsible for that customer, very similar to how M3 handles it. That level of detail in customer service uh, and that group I stay that, that understands vendor payments, uh, it has set us apart because that is, is something that people are looking for. They don't want an 800 number. They don't want a queue. They don't want to fill something out online. They're like any person who calls. They'd like to speak to someone. And we give them that opportunity to actually speak to someone. And then we have metrics that follow that. So it really creates uh, a, a true partnership with that person. They know that we're vested in what they're doing and concerned about what they're doing uh, the same way, as opposed to just you know going into a call center and somebody picks it up and goes, okay, who are you? And so we don't do that. I love that. I love that. I appreciate the yeah. the what all you have you all have done uh, specifically for the hospital because, like I said, I, hospitality is my heart. I've told Scott a million times. You know, you can take the girl out of the hotel, but you can't take the hotel out of the girl. Um, so it will always have my heart. And but, if I can say, Chrissy, yeah. too, you have helped by 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 being in that position. You have helped other hoteliers understand that. Understand that you know where they're coming from. You know what their concerns are. You know what their issues are and that everything's going to be okay, right? Yes. It's going to be okay. Here's what I suggest. I've sat in that seat before. Here's the issues I dealt with. Here's how you can overcome those. I think that's a, you know, you're a great, uh, I guess, uh, advocate for M3 and what M3 does with all of the products that you offer. And I think hoteliers can trust that. And that that's that's a huge benefit that M3 has with you. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. I appreciate it. It is my honor to be in the position yeah. I'm in. Um, so you and I are on a phone call. We're talking to a prospect. You know, they're asking questions. They're kicking tires. But here's the question. Um, when should I transition? What, what does that look like for me? What would you tell them? So, you know, you, you clearly have to have uh, buy-in of everyone, right? So we, we understand that. We want to make sure that your executive team knows what you're doing. Uh, and we want to make sure that your team knows what, because we typically deal with this, the CFO or the controller or the VP of finance. And so we want to make sure uh, they have buy-in. And so by, by, by meeting with those people up front, letting them know that, you know, we're not throwing them to the wolves. This is actually, this is how it's going to benefit you. Because the first thing they think about is, uh, does that mean my job's going away? And the answer, of course, is no. This is not a, 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 a job elimination type software because we have tools to manage it. And so I, what, I would, what I would tell people is that it's, it's very easy to do. Um, just get your staff to buy into it. Tell them what it is we're doing. They're going to love it because that's the number one thing we hear is, oh, my gosh, you mean I don't have to do this? I don't have to do this? I mean, I have time to do this like we talked about? That's the biggest thing that happens. I would just say, again, if you haven't done it yet, you are already behind. Mm -hmm. And to make the commitment to do it, pick a time frame, pick a person, and go ahead and get it done. It's not difficult to do. It's not. It's not. Um, probably the, the hardest part is just 
the signatures, just it, doing it the paperwork. It, it is paperwork. <laughs> it's bank information, getting approval from sure. the bank, and vendor information, making sure it's scrubbed. Those are the two things that probably, but like I said, if you have someone assigned to it, if you have a scheduled rollout mm -hmm. and you have all this done in advance, that's what makes it easier. It's only when you don't meet your timelines or you don't commit to something or you don't have someone who's specifically responsible for doing that, that's where it runs into an extended period of time. You know, so I always tell people, you know, what the old saying, it's uh, sometimes uh, uh, it, it's harder to look over the edge than it is to just jump. Right. Right. I mean, it's sometimes it just, you know, just go ahead and leap and get it done. Absolutely. You'll be, you'll be glad you did, for sure. Just pull the Band-Aid off. Yep. Be done with it. Yeah. So you spoke earlier about competitors or other folks playing in, in this space now. That, mm -hmm. that arena certainly opened up a little bit here recently. So um, talk to me about what the, the risks are of working with a, a trust working with a trusted solution mm -hmm. versus you know an unknown solution or tell me what the benefits are to making sure that you are working with a trusted uh solution like Paymerang when it comes to your vendor payments very very important and and I always say this about come no one creates a product uh and thinks it's bad Right. Right. No, no one creates a bad product. Says, Let's go sell this bad product uh, because that's what people are looking for. So no one does that. So everyone creates their product because they this is what they think the market wants. Where people make mistakes is and I, I alluded to it earlier. They create a product um, before they've actually talked to the company that they want to sell it to. And so sometimes they create a product that doesn't even mirror or match or has no interest to the people that want to use it. And so. I, I say that in verticals. If you haven't been in the hospitality vertical, right, that should be a red flag, especially today. Now, right. five years ago, I could understand, right? There weren't many people in there. But in today's market, if you haven't been in hospitality, dealing with hotel management companies, making payments on multi-entity, that'd be one red flag because there's plenty of competitors in it. The second, the more competitors, I learned this years ago, the more competitors in the vertical, the better they all get the better they all get and the more recognition that the vertical gets, right? So, so if there's five to five different people now doing integrated payments, that's actually good. Nobody, in, nobody wants 100% of the market because that, that creates its own problems on its own. Everyone just gets their fair share and then it kind of filters out on who are the best ones, right? right? And the best ones are the ones that truly understand hospitality. They understand multi-entity, they understand implementation, they understand reconciliation. If, if, if you have... Uh, 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 a payments company and, and, and your heavy verticals are in not in hospitality, um, you're going to make mistakes in hospitality because there's a lot of, as I said, those nuances and little things. So I love to benchmark, right? I like if someone says, hey, I'm looking at this, look at this. I'm like, that's awesome. That is fantastic. That's the best way to make a decision. Now, the, the decision is longer, but let's go. I don't mind doing it. That is absolutely. And I will tell you sometimes if you're, there's maybe something out there that you, that you specifically need that maybe we don't offer. Maybe you're not the right customer for Paymerang. And that we've had those conversations because you're looking for something that maybe is not available and we can't provide that. And I'd hate for you to have an agreement with us and then us not be able to fulfill that for you and make you disappointed. Sure. So that, that would be it. And I would love to have everyone everyone who agrees and thinks everything we do is great. But I think, I think make sure that the company is in the hospitality vertical and has been and understands multi-entity. And the second, um, you know, make sure that you benchmark. I'm, I'm happy to do that. We do that, you know, all the time. So I mm -hmm. think it's important. Perfect. So talk to me about, I know you, we had the 120 properties in four months. That certainly is, you know, a task, but doable. Um, but for a typical implementation, yeah. Um, talk to me about what kind of a, a timeline we would be on and what kind of resources from the customer side would be needed to ensure a successful, timely implementation. It's actually, it's actually, as we said, pretty easy. If you, um, if you know your banking information mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you have a good relationship with that bank as far as getting debit blocks and ability to, to, to batch fund because we use a, a for benefit of account. We don't sure. actually use the treasury account with that uh, to mitigate fraud. Uh, and then if you, if your vendor list uh, can be scrubbed, if you have someone who, who can get the bank information and fill that form out, someone who can scrub the vendor list and make sure that there's good information, that's it. That's pretty easy. Um, and you can do that on a weekly basis. Like I said, it all depends. We can go as fast or as slow as you want. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think, uh, there's any reason to go beyond uh, 
90 days, to be honest, for the average. There's no reason to, because it, I would say it's like that relative that stayed that extra day. At some point, they just start to smell. You're like, are you leaving? <laughs> you know, you just you just want to get it over with, right? And so sure. you don't, you want to avoid that pitfall of extending it too long because then your staff gets frustrated. You've got your day-to-day things going on and everyone's like, geez, can we, can we just, what are we doing? You know, and she went, you want to avoid that. And so I would say if you had your someone who's responsible, someone who can get the bank information, get those forms filled out and somebody can get the scrub, you're off and running. You'll have this done in no time. Because our, our team is going to hold your hand. We have a whole implementation team. That's all they do. Enrollment team, that's all they do. So we make it really easy. We just need pieces of information in order to do the testing for the bank and do the right. testing for the file. Uh, and what's great is, and I don't want to avoid this, on the vendor file, it's already in M3. It's right. already in the format we need it. So all we do is request that secure file, upload it into PayMarank. So there's really no, you don't have to request the file, scrub it, send it to us. We do that for you. It actually comes in automatically and it's and it's there. And if there's missing information, we just say, hey, do you have this? Do you have this? Because the main thing you need is account numbers. If you don't have account numbers, that's the first thing when we're trying to make an inquiry or make a payment that they're going to ask for the account number. If we don't have it, then that creates a, a slowdown in the payment. But other okay. than that, it's really simple. Yeah. And on and on the M3 side, it's, you know, fairly simple. We've got, you know, uh, worksheets to guide our customers through everything. And we have a superior tech support team, um, especially shout out to Miss Lynn Fouts because she's awesome. She takes care of the yeah. ePay customers um, and she she holds their hand and makes sure that they get everything they need. And, you know, all the buttons are flipped and they're taken care of. So our teams have worked together beautifully oh, and, uh, and we to, know each other real well the, the tenure of the employees is really good yes the um the communication is is really good and the response times are super quick i mean that's uh, I, I, you know you feel bad if you're not able to get back to someone like right away like if you're not right. at your tent because it's that good so that that also helps move sure. things along for sure for sure for sure so once our customers are processing payments um what kind of changes and i know this question always comes up because it is a worry and you know i love that people ask these questions especially this one so what kind of finance team what can a finance team expect to see within the first few weeks um you know it's interesting they'll they'll, they'll the thing that i hear the most is um and i i said earlier how did we make our payments before we had payment rank. So the first thing they'll do is they'll realize, okay, well, we don't have to uh, reconcile the account on a daily basis. We So that, that piece of work's gone. Um, we're not doing stop payments or chasing down unclaimed funds. And for some reason, vendors aren't calling as much. And so what you have to do is say, okay, here's a list of 100 things that an AP department would like to do. It's continuing education, right? Working with vendors. To, to find out, can we get better terms? Is, is all the vendor information correct? Is that the best vendor for us? Maybe there's another vendor we might be able to use. Um, and, and the other thing that is when someone takes time off or someone has to be away from work, or maybe there's an open position, the work doesn't stop anymore, right? We're Because right. we, we work six days a week making, making payments. So you don't feel the effects of an employee open position <clears throat> or a, uh, a person who's off work or away from work or someone who's on vacation. So it really helps that controller continue to get the work done uh, during that time. And that's, that is the, the, the two of the biggest benefits I think that we, I, that I've heard is, is gosh, we have time to do some training. We have time to do this or that open position is not crushing us the way it used to, right? We can take our time and get the right candidate. Uh, because we know Pamerang's doing the work. So I think those have been some aha moments. Perfect. So we talked about the ISTA team. So let's focus on that for just a second. What kind of customer support can Pamerang clients expect? And how does it differ from other solutions in the market? The the biggest thing is that one-to-one, right? That client success manager who's assigned to your account, right? Mm-hmm. If you have any issue between 9 a.m., 5 p.m. Eastern time, that person's available for you with metrics to monitor that. And you can email them, you can call them. But as backup support, even to that, it happens that I stay teams available too. And they have two supervisors during the day. So even even when maybe you, you need something quickly, you can get it from the client success. Or if you just need something, hey, can you look into this? You can get it get it from the team. So having those resources available to you during your Work time, Eastern time, of course, you know, people out on the West Coast. But we have hotels in Hawaii. Um, 
And so I think I think having that one-to-one -one client success is important. The 800 number call center, that's not what people want. They just don't right. want it. Uh, they don't want to deal necessarily with a, a queue. They don't want to have to identify themselves every time they call. They want someone who you call them by first name. You know, someone calls up and they know who their client success person is. They're probably going to know when that person's out of the office and then who they should call that's covering for them when they're out. That personal amount of service, in my opinion, in all the years I've been in technology, is the most important thing because that's what customers expect. They expect the technology to work. Um, but I always tell people, Paymerang's good even when mistakes are made. And that's customer service. If you're able to be good when mistakes are made, um, that's when you're providing great service. Because we don't shove, shove it under the carpet and hope it doesn't happen again. You know, We don't just make the payment and go, boy, I hope they all get there. Right. right. And, uh, and that's what our clients expect. Uh, that's what they expect. And you know, I think that is why, um, Hammering is so well aligned with the hospitality industry because in hospitality, you're you're you have to be on the stage in front of customers with that smile, with that hey, how are you doing? And you know, be on you know on cue constantly. And we're in the hospitality industry expected to deliver exceptional service to everyone every day, yeah. every minute, and to be able to have that in return from someone that, from a vendor, um, I mean, it just speaks volumes to how in tune to the industry that Pay Meringue is. So thank you and for we, that. And we, I think, learned that quickly from you, right, from the M3 team of what the expectations were. And when we built those metrics on response into our agreements and we set up our, that's why we have the iState team, because that that is what this industry requires. It's not, it's expected, but it's also required. And if you don't meet those standards, like you said, everyone in hospitality realizes uh, it's go time all the time. It's not, well, I'm going to take a few hours off. It just doesn't happen that way because guest, uh, making your guest happy, which is pay Meringue making our clients happy, but making M3 happy has to be your main focus. And I call it the gold standard. I really do because I don't know of anyone who does it more hands-on than M3 and pay Meringue. I just don't. And if it's out there, good for them but that, and, and more power because that's what you have to do. Perfect. Multi-entity businesses. Now they face a unique set of challenges. How has Paymerang's products evolved to meet those needs at scale? Yeah, it's uh, all in the all in stuff I don't understand. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I can explain it. But when you're dealing with multi-entity, you know, you can send one file for all your properties, or you can send in individual files. Now, within that individual file, um, might be multiple bank accounts. Sure. Maybe you're going to have. You want some of these payments coming out of that account and some of these payments coming out of the other account. And then, like I said, maybe you're all paying uh, U.S. Foods, but you're, uh, and, and which is the same vendor, but it's the same vendor for 25 hotels. And maybe there's five different locations that payment has to go to. Uh, maybe each one of those has a separate customer service line or a separate place you have to contact. If you don't understand that, if you can't, you're not going to be able to deliver payments because payments don't just go out. If they go out to the wrong place, the lights get turned off. Right. The food doesn't get delivered. The guy at the bar gets unhappy. So you, back to our gold standard, those payments have to be delivered correctly. And a lot of times, it's not automated. <laughs> a lot of times, it, it is manual. And that's what that iState team does. Now, we aggregate payments, of course, and we try to make as many electronic. But in some instances, it is a manual process. Uh, and so we want that. That's where you have to be in this industry, because if you don't understand different bank accounts, different payments, same vendor, different locations that need to be delivered in a timely manner, you're going to make it miserable for your clients. and You're probably going to lose them because that's that's the number one thing you have to understand. That's what we developed together. That is the number one. That's that is that's where this became such a success. Others have now mimicked or mirrored that or attempting to mirror that because mm -hmm. they now understand if you're going to be in this vertical, that's what you have to do. Sure. Success stories. We've had a few of those. Oh, we've had a lot. So think back. Uh, what is, do you, do you have a favorite success story uh, where Pay Meringue made a transformative impact on an M3 client's finances operations? I do. I have a couple. Okay. And, and um, I won't name names. I just, I, I just kind of, okay. I think it's important. But yeah, the, the, first, the first was one of our early clients, which I know you know. And um, there's a testimonial video and um, 
It was the fact that the after they signed the agreement and everything worked and they went through, they vetted us a lot. They really did. Um, and and I share the story because he said, you know, we thought this was a scam. We're like, how can you possibly pay all of our bills and then send us money back? I, I, I don't. That's that's something. Where's the fine print? And they had forgotten. Uh, because it was going so well, they had forgotten that they got rebates. And so they got their first rebate back and they're like, what's this? And he called me and said, why are we? And I said, I said, don't you remember you get rewards back? You get cash rewards back for us making your payments. He goes, he goes, that's what this is. He goes, so he realized now that he has turned his accounts payable department into a profit center. That was a that was for me as a ha. And he was kind enough to do a testimonial video. Um, and then I think the other is one of our clients was kind of stuck at about 60 hotels. They just did not think they could ever possibly add any hotels. They the workload was just too much. There's no way we can do it. We don't have enough staff. We can't hire enough people to do that. And it took us a year to convince them to go ahead and okay, try these 18 in this group. And they did. And then try this. So eventually they got all 60 of those hotels. Well, then what happened is they started thinking, oh, so we can scale. And that that message got passed up the line. They're now over 120 hotels that are with us. So they've doubled in size. And the number one comment you get from them is, again, I have no idea how we possibly got all our payments out reconciled and settled before we had payment ring. And certainly we would never have been able to grow and scale this business if we didn't have payment ring. Uh, so the first one was kind of a smaller nine to 10 hotel. This one now is up 120. And so it runs both spectrums. I've even from, from the individual destination resort had those type of, of comments. Like this has been a lifesaver for us because of the time savings, the time savings. And now you don't have that fraud issue in the back of your mind either because you know checks are getting stolen daily and you know when you can eliminate that stress on you as well but i think those are two of the stories that kind of stick out that i'm really proud of i love that i love that i love that so can you tell us about the enhancements that m3 clients can look forward to with Pamerang's integration into core pay complete yes i'm you know being with Paymarang for seven years, and I've been through other technology companies that were acquired, um, and there's always that, you know, okay, you're being acquired, what's going to happen? And I will tell you that the CorePay team has been incredible. They had a vision years ago of what they wanted the procure-to-pay model to look like. And, and so they have acquired companies to build this model. Um, and, and the idea is to automate the process from where you – procure the things you want all the way through the approval process and posting and then all the way through to the payment and tie that into budgets, tie that into expense management, all that stuff. And that's what they've done. And we were the final piece to their puzzle was the payment side. And so, you know, the concern is always what's going to happen to our customers? H how are they going to do things? I was happy to find out they're actually adopting the Paymerang customer service model. Because they felt that's an area that they could improve. And they, they made leaps over the last years, but they really look at us and they go, gosh, they, they've got it down in this industry and other industries. Plus, they were not really in hospitality. They were in hospitality at an ERP card processing level, but not at the hotel management level as much, not in the integrated payments. And so they're excited to build this vertical as well. Um, and then, of course, the products that are going to come out are really exciting. You know, over the next year, we're going to be able to introduce some uh, expense management things, you know, which is like the purchase cards at the uh, at the property level. Uh, we're going to be able to maybe look at multi-card if they want to have an, a, a credit card management program, uh, cross-border payments, which I think is something nice. that we have really not ventured into in the past. But as you grow and scale, as you get more you know, because seven of the top 10 hotel management companies that are domestic only use us today. So, so we're, we're, we were lacking that next level that had cross-border payments. And so we're going to be able to move into that. So we're excited about offering. I'm excited. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be new. Um, it's going to be new branding and, and everything's new. But the transition is going to be quick on the, on the outside, meaning the name change, emails and stuff like that, but really slow on the back end. The migration over, making sure we're doing it right. Uh, they're going to take about 
eight to 12 months to really get that done, to get it over to that platform, make sure that everything's tested and correct. But um, exciting products, uh, exciting new new opportunity uh, for Paymerang, uh, and really just a testimony to all the people at Paymerang. You know, I think I started, I was one of the first 30 or 40 employees. We're now close to 300. So just a testimony to everything that everybody at Paymerang did and kind of a reward for that to be recognized because Corpay is a $4 billion global company. So they have the resources, the power, and um, and I think the enthusiasm to what I've seen to really to really provide the products that, that they have acquired uh, into this Corpay Complete um, uh, model. And uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. That's awesome. Congratulations. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. all of the new leaps and bounds that uh, that you guys will will have for sure. Any final thoughts? Uh, not really. Just, you know, a big thanks for everything, you know, on a personal level. I think we've been able to uh, create, I think, something that has benefited the hospitality industry. And I think that's a legacy that we can be proud of, right? That we can all hang our hat and say, you know, we really did help these hoteliers um, improve their back end uh, to allow them to do some things they hadn't before, protect their money, uh, eliminate the fraud stuff. I think that's, you know, whenever you can have an impact on an industry that's of that uh, at that level that, you know, when you talk to someone, they're going to say, this is, this is a game changer for us. I think that's, that's the big thing. And I, I just thank M3 for, for, you know, in some, in some regards, taking a leap of faith about five, six years ago, uh, I guess six years ago and having the conversations to say, you know, this is a possibility, um, a big feather in a hat for M3, because, you know, you have the ability to look forward and say, this is what our clients are. This is really what's going to help our clients. And I think all your partnerships and all your, products that you offer fit that category. You know, you have the best interest of the hotels in, in, in everything you do, which sets you apart from some of the other software companies that are maybe not specific to hotel. They want to be all things to all people. They just can't do that. Whereas you guys can do that. So I think a thanks for trusting Paymerang um, and look forward to the the next chapter as we kind of continue to grow the automation space. Yeah, for sure. And thank you all too as so much. We have thoroughly enjoyed our partnership with Peng Rhyme. You guys take excellent care of our customers and we just can't thank you guys enough. You've been a game changer in that sector and we, we absolutely appreciate it. So any shows you're going to recently where people can shake your hand? Yeah. How do they get in touch with we'll you? We'll be out at the I'll be out at the lodging conference. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'll be there as Corpe or Paymerang or both. I don't really know if it'll be a Paymerang slash. I don't get know, a NASCAR. Nice I think it's yeah. I think it's gonna. <laughs> I think it's gonna transition, and then uh, we'll be at the hospitality show okay, in uh, San Antonio. So we'll be at both of those this year. So we'll finish up the year with those. I don't think we have any until next year. So those will be the last two. But yeah, stop on by and say hi. I'll be at both. Thank you for watching today's podcast. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, hoteliers, stay profitable.